Hey guys, thanks for joining us live already. And Lauren's here. Over here. Lauren Steadman is with us. She's live. Please do not swear. Nice t-shirt. <laughs> thanks. I thought it'd be a uh, a good a good t-shirt to wear on this episode. So I was gonna get mine, but I'm pretty sure Mum's taking it. <laughs> Lauren, come on! I, even I'm representing. Oh, uh, you know you. To be fair, mum, you can't get your washing exactly as your mum makes it. it. Smells delicious. That's exactly, that's true. So, welcome to the call room, Lauren. A bit episode nervous, two. Um, to anyone that watched last week's episode, thanks for that. We had Brianna, that was a great one, but obviously we have Lauren now. Um, the first question, oh, well, first of all, I'd like you to introduce yourself quickly, although I'm pretty sure everyone knows who you are, but give a quick intro. Come on, Loza. Hi guys, my name's Lauren Steadman. I'm a para triathlete for Great Britain. Robin Brew is my current coach, and Lauren Quigley is my housemate. That's true. Um, so, obviously, this is called the core room. So, the first question that I like to ask all the guests um, is, "What type of core room athlete are you?" Now, before you answer, the core room. Uh, I'll just give a quick explanation. Is the it's also called the ready room. Um, and it's the room that athletes go to before they walk out for a race. So it does what it says on the tin. You get ready for your race mentally, physically, do whatever you need to do. So, Lauren, what type of core room athlete are you? I think I actually changed. I used to be, when I first started, I was that athlete that had the headphones on, didn't talk to anybody, was always just seeing yep. a nod in my head, so like would go visualise my race. Then I realised I was getting too in the zone and I became the chatty one that just sort of like sparked conversation that didn't mean much. No solid questions because I can't be handling that before a race. More just, oh, I didn't <laughs> want to talk about the race. So I'm not going to say something. How are you feeling for your race? No, I was just sort of like a, oh, last night I had big chocolate cake or something like that. <laughs> yeah, so you're a bit of a joker in the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, just no serious questions. I get that. I get that. Um, so we're going to start with, well, second thing we're going to do is a quick fire, would you rather type questions. So don't think too much. Don't need explanations unless you really want to give them. Okay. But uh, yeah, just go with the first thing that comes to your head. So we're starting with morning or afternoon training. Afternoon. <laughs> Strictly or SAS? SAS. Racing cold temperatures or racing hot temperatures, warm temperatures? Hot temperatures. Okay, so we've got run, swim, or bike. If you bike. have to pick one. Okay. Mm. Um, relay gold. I know you're an individual sport, but relay gold or individual bronze? <sighs> relay gold. I love being part of a team. Nice. Racer or trainer? Ooh trainer oh really interesting i think. um i want to talk about it more than you probably <laughs> um series or films films still old school films okay okay so this one is win one million or never have to buy anything yourself win a million because you can invest it and make more Okay. Um, silence whilst training or music whilst training? This is more for a hard session. Music. Okay. Um, this one I saw that and I really thought this would be good for you. So <laughs> would you rather have a dog with a cat's personality or a cat with a dog's personality? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I know you love your dogs, so I thought this would be a good one. Uh a cat with a dog's personality then just get a big one yeah big cat. yeah <laughs> okay give it a dog haircut <laughs> <laughs> yeah. would you rather be the funniest in the room or the smartest in the room i've never been the funniest so i'll be the smartest <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you could choose now and the last one is would you rather be able to run at 100 miles per hour or fly at 10 miles per hour fly at 10 miles an hour yeah. I'd love to be a bird. You can, you can already run at 100 miles an hour, so... I wish for <laughs> <laughs> 
Right, so they read quick fires. Thanks for that, Loza. No explanation needed. Um, we've been sent some really good questions in, so I think we'll dive straight in. Um, the first one, I mean, the most difficult aspect of SAS. I think for me, the most dis yeah. no, difficult aspect wasn't so much the actual tasks themselves, because I actually got excited to get hooded up, put in the back of a Range Rover and driven to a task, because you knew you were going to do something that you just don't do on a standard week to week basis. Like it was so cool. <laughs> what got yeah. me was no sleep. I, I wouldn't say that I'm a massive lover of sleep and I didn't realize how much I valued sleep until it happens. But you've got, you get half an hour sleep and someone tells you, oh, go on, it's your turn on the night watch. And you know, you're up there for an hour and a half. It's raining, you get wet, you get cold, you go back in and then you've got another hour and a half before it's your turn again. And that's what got me the lack of sleep. Yeah. I understand that because I know what you're like when you get a little bit less sleep yeah. than you would Aggie. like. Aggie. <laughs> I'm only kidding, I'm kidding. Um, so I've got a question here that I thought was interesting because obviously I got a few that said, what's your, been your worst moment of your career? But someone asked what the worst training moment you've ever had is because the worst moment of your career is, you know, I'm sure you've talked about it before, but a training moment um, I thought was quite interesting. worst training moment i've ever had you're like that i'm perfect i've, I've always no, been great no, I'm at not, training i'm not perfect <laughs> but it's what you define as the worst training moment i've never had an injury or anything that stopped me to train on that front um yeah i've learned now that actually asking for a rest is a positive thing so i would would have probably used to have said oh when i've had, needed to stop but actually that's just for adaption to have but probably the worst the worst training I've ever done was leading into a world championships in 2009. We were actually on taper mode um, and I ate something at the hotel. We were in Brazil and I basically, they, I didn't have time to be ill and I got stacked upon a modium and I can remember bending over on the blocks and being able to feel like a concrete amount of everything inside me. And I think that was probably oh. a bad point because I knew I didn't have time to, do what your mum would tell you to do and get in bed you rest up um yeah find a way through oh yeah well that's just I mean that's just evident of the tough cookie you are especially on SAS just smashing through it all it's just insane yeah um so going from the other side of that your favorite have you ever had a favorite moment from training like have you ever done a session that you were just like I don't know how I did that but I did it <laughs> yeah I reckon it's it's actually gonna be last year I was in Florida, yeah. so you would have been there with me. It was with uh, Mr. Brew, uh, somewhere in Florida. <laughs> we were in, where did we stay? Well, well... Oh, Claremont. Claremont. We were in Claremont. And yeah. about 20K from there, you can cycle. And there was a, a, a tree line that was, I think, I want to say 26 miles long, but I can't remember. And basically, for those that are watching, Robin Brew is an absolute powerhouse. And he has basically... <laughs> All of my body is one of his quads, not just two of them. Um, <laughs> and we were doing this stretch where we had to do 2K hard and then we'd get like, I don't know, three minutes easy. And that was my favorite session because I actually managed to hold the front of the train. Robin Brew was sat behind me on my wheel and I thought, you know what? I'm doing all right here. <laughs> I thought you meant you were going to say when we went to um, Disney Springs and you ran around that little track inside the like Nike shop. And you were like, oh, it yeah. could have been when we, we managed to keep down those sandwiches and then do a hard oh. <laughs> session. Oh. Yeah, downtown Claremont, the sandwiches fillings were like that thick, weren't they? they and we tried were, to yeah. do a hard set. Not Pretty a good effort. idea. Not a good idea. Um, perfect. So uh, I've got here, have you ever wanted to quit at any point in your career? Oh, good question. Yes. I would say twice and they have been after major games so once was yeah. after london where you know i was a really good swimmer but actually it got to the point where things were getting pretty hard mentally to deal with because i was putting in all the effort and not getting back the results that i wanted um, and that is where then i fell into the world of triathlon so i just switched sports and then yeah. after rio i also felt really distant and disengaged from all sport because obviously i swam the wrong way in rio and that made me exceptionally angry and I didn't realize at the time I just you know was resentful towards sport but it was actually the fact yeah. that I tried for something and it hadn't gone right so 
I thought about, had seven months off after Rio. Um, and then Robin come back to me and he said, listen, you've got an engine in you. You are a one of a kind athlete. I want you to give me the chance to coach you into a games. Um, so yeah, we was going for Tokyo and then someone went, no, next year. Yeah, I know. Don't need to do it this year. Tokyo only can be next year, apparently. <laughs> um, a load of people are saying hey in the comments to you, Lauren. Although because they're saying just hey, Lauren, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna pretend they're saying it to me. So hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've got a question here. Out of the three sports, if you could take one out and replace it with another sport, what would that sport be, and which would you replace it with? Oh, I'd like a highly skilled sport. No, not that triathlon isn't. But <laughs> like, involves... You just insulted the whole triathlon community. Well done, Lauren. We'll see you next week. Yeah. We... <laughs> um, <laughs> I think something like a basketball shootout. That would be like, you know, like a proper honed in skill or not oh, dance. Nice. I'm not very good at that. Bowling, like down the temp in bowling or, you know, something that involves actually a bit more um, finesse. Ah, um, that's interesting. I didn't, I didn't think you'd go down that route. Fair enough. What do you think? Of um, this? And if you had to switch I, from the same person, I got. If you had to switch to a different sport, there was a team sport. Which one would you pick? Oh, team sports. Quidditch. But if I could, I would. Um, <laughs> I think I could actually two. I think it'd be like either something like netball because I super love netball. Or it would be rounders. Ah, interesting. Fair I'm enough. A, I loved a, a bit of rounders at school. Yeah, I'm a lefty, so everyone always go. Or oh, the last minute, they're like, "Oh, she's a lefty." I'm like, "Ha!" <laughs> um, I did get a question, so I thought it would be a good time to briefly explain Caesar and what you're doing with that. Now, obviously, wearing the t-shirt, representing. Yeah. So. I've had a passion for, I guess, psychology, mental health, um, and all things that I guess you learn as being an athlete, toughness, resilience, determination. Uh, I did psychology as an undergrad, and my friend Tammy also did it with me at Portsmouth Uni. She went off into the, to the world of business, corporate world, and did, um, I guess, consulting, um, mental wellbeing cons con consultations in huge corporate world. I've done a few of those myself um, with different sponsors. And then obviously I've got the sporting mindset that's and I think it's just my own mindset engraved into it and I wanted to somehow share what I've learned share how I approach things in life the mentality that I just sort of get into uh, it might be a bit harsh could be a bit extreme but it's the way that I've dealt with things and even if someone only takes a percentage of that and can learn yeah. learn about it I, you know that that's cool for me and Tammy wanted to do the same so we sort of came together um we was planning on starting this post Tokyo um, and then lockdown happened and I was like, you know what, Tam, let's get in, let's, go let's, for it. let's do this. Um, we've got yeah. time. And then mental health week come up and I thought, you know what, all of us on SAS have just so, shown like so much resilience, toughness, courage that actually let's get out there. Let's produce a t-shirt. Let's make people feel part of the community where it's not us and them. It's actually all of us together. Um, and it's been beautiful to see people from all walks of life wearing these t-shirts and proudly wearing them and feeling as though when they put it on that's their mindset for the day I am strong I can do this yeah. um, and then we're, we're trying to also put up loads of content and you know uh, information online so that you know we change people's mindsets their approaches um, and it, it's going really well so far excellent it looks like it's going really well and you know like you say it's great to see so many people getting involved and stuff like that so that's great. Now, we've just had a question come through on here that says, do you remember netball from school, Lauren? Do you remember so, netball from school? I do. And this is Carol. And Carol basically has known me since I was a little, little baby. And when mum used wow. to go out, she passed me over the garden fence. Um, and I'd stay there for a few. And actually, I, Carol used to make the peanut butter sandwiches. So, Lauren, that's where my weird peanut butter thing comes from. So. Ah, Okay, because the next question was going to be, what's your favourite meal post-workout? And I know in the mornings, if we didn't have peanut butter or cucumber, I should get out of the flat and get away from it as quick as possible. <laughs> yeah, so it's a weird combo, but I find that peanut butter makes like your tongue and your teeth stick together to the roof of your mouth and you're like, mm, 
So I thought, what can I do that's going to make it a bit slippery? And I was like, wow, <laughs> cucumber. And then I just thought, like, <laughs> anyone that's just tuned in right there is like, what are they talking about here? <laughs> Any other any other post training snacks that you like? Oh, um, we have, I have a smoothie. Go and try it. I really love that. Uh, we we do frozen frozen mango, a banana, almond milk, a bit of peanut butter. I like a little dab of um, vanilla essence in there. And if you have it, a little Sharon, dab Sharon fruit. We like our Sharon fruit, don't we? <gasps> we do like a Sharon fruit. We love a Sharon fruit, and they're huge. That is a good show. They are huge in Lanzarote. If anyone doesn't know what a Sharon fruit is, please go to the shop and buy one. Oh, They're also the called persimmon. Pers persimmons. Persimmons, there you go. Persimmon, yeah. Lauren introduced me to them and they are just absolutely amazing. Life-changing. Um, I, I know that you did get asked, so and I thought it was a great question that I probably should have asked myself. When are you going to release your cookbook? Um... <laughs> in years to come i would like to get out probably first a kid's book because of i just love things kids uh and then I'm, yeah. i think an autobiography would be cool but i want it to be a different kind of one maybe a cookbook but if it goes the way my sister's gone with it yeah ellie doesn't appreciate any of my healthy <laughs> my dad the other day said two tomato -y, i bet he said no he went to my sister oh. he was scraping it in the bin oh. he went, this is where it belongs Ooh. <laughs> calling out no <laughs> <laughs> oh I, I love your cooking that's the thing i've missed the most in lockdown well it's chicken and mushroom risotto this evening oh i'm so jealous so here's one cooking or baking Oof. if you had are to you, get rid of one i used just to be baking life. i think just just cooking now i love to cook for people as well uh, and then i love to get for those watching, I love to get a score out of 10. So quite often I'll say to Loza, right, what was that out of 10? And she'll go, oh, so this. Stressful. And yeah, she doesn't like it. But I, I like an honest score so I know how to get, be get better. Yeah, but you, you, you ask, what can I do better? And I'm like, it's perfect. No, and you're like, no, it's not. Something. <laughs> ah, you're a great chef. You know that. Um, I got a question here. Would you want your children to swim or do triathlon or you know be in that kind of world or not not really uh the answer to this used to be no because i thought after doing so many 4 45 starts in the morning i was like my kids are never doing it but then i realized that actually i love the fact that i can swim confidently anywhere and i'm not got a fear of water and i think that it when you get swimming it feels so amazing that actually i want my kids to feel that i want them to be able to to swim to a to a good yeah. standard so i've probably got a load a load more early mornings in me i'll probably end yeah. up start swimming again you will i bet you will i bet you'll be like i'm done and then you'll get kids and you'll get in and you'll teach them how to swim and it'll just go from there oh, you'll be world masters champion at some point <laughs> <laughs> No, that's great. Um, so I've got, this was a good one. What is the best thing or things that you've taken from your sports career so far that you now use, at, you know, just in life, in general life? Is there anything that sticks out? Yeah, I think the, the first word that comes to, head, comes to mind is discipline in that mm. you have to be quite selfish and very disciplined as an athlete you cannot expect to get gold medals and be on podiums and deliver world-class performances if you are not strict on yourself, if you do not make sacrifices. And I guess when I say discipline, I mean, there's many mornings that I don't want to go training. And there's been many times that I've not felt like doing something like packing it all in or doing that. And it's having the discipline to say to yourself, I need to do this because it's banking one more session in there. It's having discipline to not stay up super, super late and know that when you do stand on that podium and the national anthem's playing and you've got your medal, that is why you gave up all that you did. Um, and I, when I now transfer that into everything else I've been doing, I find I've got this level of awareness and I guess toughness in that as soon as it goes wrong, I'm like, no, that's it. Okay, fine. Start again find a way, take a positive from the failed attempt 
and go again yeah. and just don't do the same mistake you did the first time around second time around no oh, great advice um that was good great answer i thought i'd get a good answer from you though um we, i got a couple of younger athletes asking um just for motivation or anything like if you could go back to younger lauren um and give a little bit of advice or just one piece of advice you know what what would it be what would yours be uh, i think my my biggest piece of advice would be to to do it because you want to do it i didn't realize at the time how amazing my parents were my parents always put opportunities in front of me they gave me all scenarios and then they let me make the choice for myself and now looking back on my whole career not once was I made to go training. Not once was I pushed to do something that I didn't want to do. So find something that you love to do and do it because you want to do it, not because mum and dad are saying you should do this, you should do that. They're going to push you occasionally because sometimes you probably have a right nightmare. And my mum always used to say I was a little moo moo, Missy moo moo. Um, but most of the time, you know, it was me going in saying, dad, um, you know, it's, it's half four, we need to go swimming. It was never dad coming in going, come on, get up, you need to do this. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing that I say I I managed to do really well. Um, and if you are lacking in motivation, sit down with yourself and ask yourself why you're doing it and what your end goals are. Is there anything else that you'd rather pursue in life? Because life is far too short to be so doing something that you're not happy with. Perfect. No, it's great advice. Um, so thanks for that. And there's been some really lovely comments actually for you, Lauren. Um, someone's yeah. put you're both you're both inspiring. So thank you very much. I know I am. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, someone did ask what you've been up to in lockdown, because obviously you've not been able to swim. I know you're getting back in now in open water. Obviously, you can still bike and run. But yeah. have you been doing any other things that maybe outside of sport? I don't know that, that you've picked up that you think. Yeah, so obviously we both fled Lanzarote. Um, so I left quite a bit of kit out there, left my TT bike out there and then moved up to... Uh, Peterborough, where my parents are, purely because I wanted to be around them, because um, I wasn't sure what's going to happen with COVID and, and lockdown. They live in the country, yeah. so that means that I've been able to go running around fields. Um, I got a treadmill off British Triathlon, which was really useful to do some more sessions inside when I wanted to bike outside on other days. Um, went into the wonderful world of Zwift on the bike, and was able to like do virtual rides with lots of people. That was cool. Yeah. Uh, mixed things up by doing some cool little circuits in the garden. Um, and then outside of that, just... Doing things like, well, obviously did the charity t-shirts, that took up a lot of my time, but more things like learning a new cuisine. Um, I tried to, I tried very hard to do um, sourdough, um, but the start of... Oh just, yeah, I didn't ask you about that when you were doing it. You said it was right, you were going to leave it for a week, yeah, and it was going to be the size of a house, so yeah, I was like, then, can't wait for my slice. A, f a fellow teammate, Hannah Moore, said that actually I should have left it for more like seven to eight days to get the starter to work instead of just four or five so maybe i need to try again um yeah but yeah so just things like that and and also family time i left home at 14 and haven't been back since for more than about a week so uh, yeah. i'm pretty sure dad's ready for me to go now his food bill's gone up by about <laughs> 80 quid so sick yeah, of you cooking <laughs> he is. um you obviously you just touched on family there lauren and and obviously i know how close you are to them and like you just said, you you left when you were 14. Um, and for those that don't know, Lauren went to Mount Kelly. And then since then, she's moved around after school finished with sport and all that sort of stuff. Um, but even though you've been away from them, how important have family been in, you know, your whole sporting journey and, and everything around that, you know? Uh, massively important. Um, they've always been there. They've provided all opportunities for me. And, you know, you, I wouldn't have got where I am today without them um, they they've been absolutely amazing I think one thing that wasn't shown on SAS was something that made me chuckle because it's actually what my dad has told me since I've been about 11 years old and yeah. when it gets tough or I look like a little bit disappointed or a bit down my dad would say to me you've got an extra 30 percent find a way and when they did the little video clip on SAS it was to try and break you like see your family make you upset yeah um and well, my mum told me that my sister forgot I was doing it, so that was helpful. And then my dad, said, <laughs> my dad said to me on the video, "You're probably hurting, but you have another thirty percent." And I was like, I just nodded. I was like, "Yes, boss." Like that's that's my DS. That's, that's my brilliant. Start. 
Um, and I yeah. draw strength from them and, and everything they've done. Um, family is family is everything. And they train with me like poor mum and dad, they're fitter than they've ever been. Because in lockdown, I'm like, mum, in the gym, we're going to do some bicep presses. And dad's on the bike and running with me. Yesterday, I did the 800s um, on the grass track. Um, and he was like, well, you know, I, th I thought you told me that Robin wanted this, this. And I was like, oh, okay. So, yeah, they've been huge. Nice. No, I, and and I can see that when they came out to, to visit, it was lovely to see them. And it's great that you've got that support as well as me, obviously, you know, I'm just great. Yeah, you're fan. <laughs> um, but no, that's brilliant. Um, the last question that I have is your funniest moment in a race. Have you ever had like a funny moment that you just maybe laugh to yourself about or anything like that that you just remember pops in your mind? Funny moment? Well, it's funny now, but it wasn't at the time when I swam the wrong way at the games. That no. wasn't cool. Um, no. <laughs> another funny moment. Awesome. Um, no, actually, do you know what? The world of triathlon, everything's down to a T. I guess the funniest time was my first race back after Strictly, actually. Um, I'd right. been training for five weeks. I had dancer yeah. legs. I didn't have triathlete legs. And <laughs> I did my swim. And I came out of the swim three minutes down on the leader. And then oh. I was just in transition and I was trying to get my helmet on. And dad's there and he just shouted over, um, any time today would be nice. Like, because I just forgot. Oh. On. And then everyone was watching and I was like, oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, so that, that makes me laugh when I think of that. Um, but yeah. You should have run, you should have been like, Da, 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 da. just to remind everyone <laughs> I wish someone had played it because it would have been even better <laughs> oh brilliant uh, we've just had one question that you probably don't want to answer but I'm just going to shout it out was Joey a nightmare to be around on SAS <laughs> I'm sure he wasn't I know that it was all good Joey, between you two nah Joey was Joey and I think when we were all down and in a lot of pain if it hadn't have been for Joey and his amazing comments that were very funny um we'd have you know we'd have all been kind of like really sore muscles and just down and everything and so like just a simple thing when he come running up to me like he said we've got ticks i've got a naked photo shoot in a few weeks can you check my back and i'm like <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah i can you know, he, like... <laughs> so, yeah. but um for all the bits that we kind of bickered um there were a lot of good times as well um yeah so, yeah yeah he was all right Perfect, perfect. Well, that was the last question that we have there, Lauren. Um, thank you to everyone that's tuned in. Um, and there's been some lovely comments, so that, that's, that's been really nice. But um, no, it's been great to have you on, Lauren. Thanks for that. No, um, having me. Yeah, no worries. And anyone that's not watching it live, thanks anyway for watching. Um, and yeah, we'll see you next week for another guest on the call room. But thanks, Lauren. Woo! Cheers, Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. I'm going to keep waving. <laughs> <laughs> there we go.